Hi ladies, Jen here with Jen's Crafted Chaos. I hope everybody's had a good week. I um, spent my week trying to learn how to edit and I still can't figure it out. Um, so hopefully we won't have any problems with this video. I am going to try to make it a quick scrap, but I'm not sure how quick it's going to be. Uh, I'd like to make paper roses, and these are the ones that I've been working on this week. Um, I was testing out different colors. This color right here, this peachy pink color is what I call it, is something I've been leaning towards a lot lately. The happier colors, which is strange for me, but um, anyhow, yeah, here we go. Let's Let's go ahead and... Let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, you are going to need a heavy duty watercolor paper. Um, I used 140 pound because once you get it wet and manipulated, it, it, it really, it takes a beating and regular cardstock would just rip. So you want some heavy duty watercolor paper to begin with. Um, next you want to have cut out shapes or die cuts whichever you can get a hold of. Um, I found this today, or yesterday actually, when I was shopping. Um, I thought you could easily trace this and cut it out um, if you don't have a die cutting machine. Uh, you need three large and three a size down. It doesn't have to be any certain size, but this particular size, it's about a three inch circle. And I, I, it works for my cards, so I really like that, that size. Next, you're going to need a center. I use a medium-sized pearl, not the average size that you would see in a regular necklace, but the next size up. It's just plastic pearl, no big deal. I have, however, used uh, aluminum foil before. You just take a little square sheet of aluminum foil, ball it up into a tiny ball, Cone shape actually would be the easiest way, and this can be your center. I will show you in a moment what I mean. <clears throat> Next, you will need a shaper. This was advertised as a clay shaper, but it actually works for flowers. So, it's fantastic. It wasn't expensive, it was on Amazon, and it came with like five other tools, and they're great. Um, but if you don't have one of these, no big deal. You can use a measuring thing, doohickey. <laughs> um, me not a measuring cup, but a whatever. It's half a teaspoon. <laughs> just you can use this, and then you can just press it to to shape your petals. You can just press down in the inside. Okay. Um, you're gonna need a squishy styrofoam. Matt, this came with something that I bought, I can't remember. Um, I also save all the styrofoam bits I get in packages and I use those if, if I don't have something like this available. Okay, let's see, you're gonna need some sort of color. I don't know if you, I think you can see these. I, I used Distress Ink for these guys. For the this one right here that we're gonna do, I used this color. Um, again, I don't think I said it actually. You can you can use any color, any type of medium that you'd like. Um, actually, if you're gonna if you're gonna use sprays, I would wait till after the rose is made to spray. And if you're if you are gonna color ahead of time, you've got to remember that. Most of your mediums are going to work with water, like watercolors, and you are going to get some transfer from your color, but that's okay. It just gives it more of a shabby look. At least for me, it's okay. Um, you know, for you, maybe it's different. So, you know, that's totally your choice. Also, you're going to need some water, spray bottle of water, and glue gun. If you haven't already invested in a glue gun, um, I suggest you get a low temp glue gun only because when you burn yourself, and if you're new, like I was, you will burn yourself quite regularly. And the low temp is easier to, uh, it doesn't hurt quite as bad. Either way, you should keep a cup of cold water, ice water next to you while you're working, if you do burn yourself a lot. Okay. 
Now what I'd like to do is show you at least one entire rose and then just go over it again with the second um, just to make sure that you, you got it. Again, you don't have to watch the entire um, the entire video if you don't like. If you get it after the first one, then cut it off. But please leave me a comment and subscribe if you haven't yet because I'd like you to be in the giveaway. I, I need. I would like to have more people, more choices <laughs> to pick through. Okay, you want to give each flower a good couple of squirts at least. Um, now, what you're going to be manipulating, the main part is around the edges. So make sure your edges definitely get a good a good amount of water. Now, do you see what I mean about the it working? together I think it makes I think it make I think it makes it look really neat but you know that's just me oh my goodness okay when they start curling up like this they're pretty much ready to be manipulated <laughs> that's the word of the day apparently all right so what you want to do oh I don't think I mentioned um coloring the halfway I think it, it, it gives it a really, it gives it a good end product because you can put glitter on the other half of your rose. You'll see when it's done. Well, you probably saw when in my examples. First things first, there's an embossed line if you have a die cut. Use that line and just do a little fold right over top. Not difficult at all unless your card is completely dry, in which case, either spray it again or if you don't if you're worried about spraying the card again because everything else is wet um, get a baby wipe and get your fingers moistened on the baby wipe and then then you can flip the uh, at the ends over like so but make sure you don't half this like halfway this because this is really what makes your rose look like a rose is this folded over part Mm, and you don't want it like super folded over, but definitely one. Um, mm, yeah, see, I didn't get the edges very well. <laughs> so much for doing what you teach, right? <laughs> like, oh well. I can say, regardless of how this video turns out, and I hope I don't say a lot of ums, and I hope I don't go on and on about ridiculous stuff but either way this is this is being put out because I cannot take another use uh, another tutorial to myself <laughs> when making paper roses <laughs> however I have become a pro I'd also like to show you how to make fomarinian or fomarin, I'm sorry, fomarin roses or fomarin flowers of all kinds, um, and fabric flowers. I'm, yeah, I'm into the fabric thing now, teaching myself how to sew, which is crazy. I haven't really got very far, but... <laughs> I didn't sew my clothes by accident when I was trying to sew something else, so that's a plus, because that's happened to me before. But, yeah, you see, this is just a little time consuming, and I was having a problem when I was do doing my other videos because I kept going over the amount of time that I had storage wise so I had to go get a new phone well somehow or another that one <laughs> wouldn't let me go past a certain amount of minutes either so I I have um probably recorded this tutorial this is probably the fourth time maybe I'm not sure I know I, I, I can say this, there is going to be another video coming up probably this afternoon. It's just, um, I'll just going over some new stuff that I'm putting in my shop. Some pretty cool stuff actually. Some alcohol inks and some, 
I even actually I even have a die cut, believe it or not. Okay, so you've got your you've got your flowers folded. Now you want to take your shaper and with the small end and the small die cut, you just want to give it a little um a little molding. <laughs> a little molding, yeah. Mm-hmm. It gets it as it it dries pretty quickly too. That's the only problem is that it's like if you don't manipulate it quick enough, it starts to dry up and become harder. And like I said, I've been making roses for a couple of days now, so my hands are starting to hurt from doing all the the pressing. Now for the big ones, just give each petal a nice push. And then one in the center. Oh my, did I? I don't think I did the centers on these guys. Here we go. Okay, one more. All right, now you want to start with your small, your small ones first. Okay, now what you want to do is take your center, your foil, or your pearl, whichever you choose. Put a little dab of glue in the very center of your small flower layer and drop your pearl in it. Okay, next you want to go across ways. Of course, it's not completely across because it's a bipedal flower. However, just, you know, go here and here. The first and the third petal, there we go. There we go. Just give a nice bit of glue on each one. Spider webs are part of the experience with crafting, it's sad but true. Now you wanna take both of the first two and you want them to meet in the center over top your pearl. And you want them to hug. Can you see? Just hold it for a moment. Okay, now you just want to go through and do your other petals. Each one, hold. Now if you come across one that has been folded down fully or that has popped back up, Go ahead and fold it while you're holding it. No big deal. Mm, I always go clockwise. It makes the petals look nice if, they, if they're all going in the same direction, obviously. Oh, no. Do you see this? No bueno. Mm -mm. All right. Next. All right. <laughs> Somehow I turned out a little crooked this time, but that's okay. No such thing as mistakes, just happy accidents. All right, next you wanna do your next small one as your second. You wanna line up your colors. Keep all your purple to one side, or whatever color it is you chose to do. I mean, you don't have to do it halfway. That's just, that's one way I like it. What I ha have learned from crafting, well, I learned a lot. Okay, oh, for this, I'm so sorry. 
for this uh, next layer, you want to start the glue, do a line across the bottom of the petal. Obviously not the bottom bottom, but the, as low as you can go without being under the flower. Okay, and then you want to attach it next and hold. Again, with the folding, if you still need, if it still needs to be folded, fold it. Now, a um, couple things when you first start crafting. One thing is don't let your first try at anything discourage you from trying it again because eventually it's going to turn out right. I mean, like me and these stinking roses, <laughs> how long it took me to get them right. But, you know, I, I had, oh, I had some terrible stuff. I really did, but I, I stuck with it, and I'm glad I did because I, I'm I, every day. I every day I learn something new, and so the the one thing is don't 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 get discouraged. And the next thing is enjoy the journey. I know it's written everywhere, but for crafting, the best part, I think, is the making of it. I mean, even though this is probably my millionth rose that I've made in the last week, that's a lie. Um, two weeks I've been doing flowers. Remember, keep your glue at the bottom. Now, only do one at a time and hold it. I'm doing two for time's sake. So that way I have time to show you another, another flower. Anyhow, but yeah, enjoy the journey. Like it's, it's truly the best, the best part. It really is. Oh, and a big thing for me is overthinking, overthinking everything, overthinking, over planning, over organizing, over, over, over. That's just, that should be my middle name. I'm not kidding. All right, here we go. Now, remember, line at the bottom. of the petal. Don't do what I did. Not if you're, this is your, you know, first couple times making these. Do a petal at a time. You can do two petals at a time, but. Just take the extra 30 seconds that it, I'm gonna gain. <laughs> and make sure your rose turns out beautiful. The first time, because that, as much discouragement as you get from a bad one, the encouragement from a good one is just that much sweeter. And it doesn't have to be a rose. I mean, it can be anything. Look at this. You see? That's what happens. It dried up on me. Oh, okay, I'm not even going to attempt that. That's what I get for talking. Okay, this is the last petal anyway, so I want to tuck it in. Tuck it into this little guy. Get on in there. All right, there we go. Just so they look uniform. So they're all headed in the same direction. Um, if you're coming loose anywhere, give it a glue if you need to. Just remember, you don't want to put glue at the very top because you want them to to have a little bit of space. You don't want them jammed together. And mine actually, mine are pretty tight compared to most of the ones I see. I like them this way. Um, you know, you know, everybody has their own preference. And when you get When you get the hang of it, you'll end up doing doing it your own way, you know? You'll color it a certain way. You will... Or not color it, you know? 
I mean, there's you'll make giant ones or small ones. It it just I mean the possibilities are endless. I I like to look for inspiration. And then I like to take that inspiration and try to put my own take on it when I make a project. Unless it's a quite difficult project. And then I will pretty much try to copy it. Now, when you copy something, it, for learning purposes, it's fine. But don't advertise it on social media as your own, okay? Give the person credit who who you got it from. If it's, you know, exact, if it's, it's plagiarized, there's no such thing as plagiarizing an art. It's just harder to catch. Um, but, yeah, that's one thing that I've learned is, is you know, learning, you need to, to, in order to learn, copying is, a, it's just a fact. It's going to happen. But be respectful be respectful of other people's work you know and just don't just don't call it your own that's all if it's not your own okay starting to look like a rose fantastic last layer a little bit of glue hook it up all right There we go, lined up. Remember tucking your last petal to the one before it. And remember to go clockwise. I mean, I guess you could go counterclockwise, especially if you're left-handed, but just try to go in the same direction um, so your petals, you know, go the same to, same direction. Um, try to remove your spider webs. Um, at this point, you can add glitter if you'd like. I, however, am going to hook it up with some leaves because I... I got some leaves di leaf dyes when I got my dyes for to make the roses because I was making them with other I was making them with makeshift I used um, a template that I got offline actually I used right here we'll stick this with the others okay let me see what kind of time we're working with 23, okay, we are going to, let's see, all right, and then, all right, let's see here, all right, I'll show you real quick how to do the coloring, um, for these little, for these little guys, I generally just do them that way, especially because, well, these are, well, these are pretty old, so I need to re-ink them, but the ink, honestly, is not um, too much more expensive than the, all right. I'm going to show you a couple of these flower, a couple of these flipped over. I'm, I'm molding them again just to give you a good idea. And I, I'm getting short on time, so I hope you catch this. All right. Now, first thing, after you get them wet, after you color them, and then you get them wet, 
you want to give them a second to begin to curl. When they start popping up in the center, they're ready to go. Go all the way around on all five of your petals or all five of your layers and flip it like so. Okay? And do not forget, do not forget to do this. Next, you want to give it a mush in the center. Let me see. One here, one on each petal. Give it a good press. And then one in the very center, okay? Don't forget. I'll show you one more. Just to make sure you got it, okay? Also, now, if you don't feel like checking out my next, um, my video and showing you my new stock, um, just swing by the store and check it out. It's jenscraftedchaos.etsy.com. Um, and like I said, we've got some really new cool stuff, um, that's going to be in the shop. And everything is, um, cheaper than you would buy it some you know at a regular retailer because um my stuff is like duplicates and such okay now we are going to go ahead and let me make sure we're still good on time oh we're get we're cutting it close we're cutting it close give the center a bit okay I'll just show you how to do the bud. Go a little bit on the right across from each other. Well, first and third petal. Okay. Have them meet in the center and hug. Hi, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Yep, I said it. Okay. I'm getting ready to be cut off, so let's just get this bud done. I just want to thank whoever is watching right now for sticking with me, and I do appreciate it. And again, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do so that you can be joined in on our, um, on our giveaway. And of course, when I say our, I mean mine and Maggie's. I don't know if anybody has seen who Maggie is, but check out my Etsy shop and you'll see she's my co-creator, I guess you could say. Her name is Maggie Mae Marth. <laughs> there's a picture of her on my Etsy shop. Anyway, all right, there's our bud. Let me show you a quick project that I made with my roses real quick. Here we go. It's nothing special. I can't decide if it's tacky or romantic or tacky. <laughs> um, I, I've never seen the the roses red, and so that's that's where that came from. Anyhow, so this is what I made, and gosh, if you do make these, please take pictures and send them to me and. Comment and follow me on Instagram. It's Jen's Crafted Chaos and and Jen Marth on Facebook. Wow, that's a mouthful. So yeah, follow, subscribe, comment. I'm asking a lot, aren't I? Don't worry, I don't want your kidneys or anything like that. At least not yet. <laughs> anyway, guys, you guys have a great night, and I hopefully will see you in my next video. And I promise I won't let a whole other week go by. I will do my next one in the next couple of days. Take it easy. Happy crafting.